Well, hello. I, uh, been a bit busy with the bike this evening. Added a few bits, as you can see. But, uh, this video is more about bike security and locks. And, uh, as you can see, I've fitted a good old U-lock, also known as a D-lock or shackle lock. They are on a pretty good, robust lock. And, uh, well, basically what I want to talk about was, uh, types of lock and the best ways to lock your bike, because, uh, as I've said before in previous videos, I had one stolen from me probably nearly two months ago now. And, uh, because I didn't have it locked. So, uh, uh, the other thing is, I often see people that lock their bikes up in, um, the wrong way. And, uh, I'm also going to talk about not buying cheap locks like this thing. I'm going to show you why in a minute. Uh, but first, as uh, many cycle shops and keen cyclists and the police would probably recommend, and I have seen recommended in videos on YouTube, get yourself a couple of dif different locks and don't spare on the expenses. Um, because if you have more than one type of lock, it means any would-be thief would have to carry more tools, and it's more of a uh, deterrent from your bike being stolen. So, uh, I've got a D-lock on this one. You get yourself a good, thick, quality cable lock, or chain lock. And that will uh, mean any would-be thieves would have to bring multiple tools to try and get through the locks. Because these D-locks are actually quite tough. Uh, one thing I see a lot of people do is they'll put the lock round the wheel like this and then to a, a railing or a bike rack or something. And the only problem is with that, all a thief would need is either a 15mm spanner, or in my case, they can just flick the quick release open and they're gone with the rest of the bike and just leaving the wheel there. So don't lock it just through the wheel. The best way to do it, and the most secure way, is to put, go round your frame, one of your bars, and then around a railing or another solid object and preferably not a post where you can just lift the bike up and straight over <coughs> and the other if you've got two locks the other thing I would do is probably put a lock through the back wheel and through the frame so at least it would make it hard for them to walk off with the bike if they did get one lock open they would have to carry it which would be quite um obvious what they had just gone and done if someone saw them, so um, a lot of thieves would prefer a quick getaway. So they're the sort of they're the um recommendations I have. You could even put a lock through this part of the wheel in the frame as well so you'd have three locks. Have as many locks as you want. The more locks the merrier. Anyway. I need to find my tripod. Let's go over here on the chair. So I'm going to show you why you don't use cheap locks like this one. I'll just put you on the tripod. My cheap one pound tripod. I'm surprised it's still actually working. It hasn't fallen a bit yet. Right. Now, this lock, I'll just make sure you near enough in view. There we go. This lock was stuck around a bike that came into me. So I don't have the keys to it. This is my set of keys. Right. What I'm going to do, put this 
padlock key in there. Now, as you can see, one turn. But if I just pull that key out just a smidge and give it a little wiggle. Might take a bit of wiggling. There we go. And I can guarantee you could do that with any key that'll fit in that lock. You put the key all the way in, pull it back a notch, give it a wiggle and pop, the lock is open. And your bike is gone. Plus, as you can see, that cable is not very thick at all, so it won't take long to cut through with a hacksaw. In fact, I've cut through cable locks with a hacksaw to get them off bikes where the keys have been lost. And I've done it in probably about a minute. If you've got a decent hacksaw or decent blades, wouldn't take long. So, that is why I personally wouldn't use a lock like this. You saw that uh, it only took me a few seconds with that padlock key to pop the lock open. So, if you're tempted to get one of these sort of 199 or 299 locks like this one, don't. They're not worth it. <coughs> so, you know what we do with locks like that? Bro, no good. One of the reasons I decided to do that video, this video, not that video, this video, I will get my grammar correct, uh, is because I found that lock in the cupboard in the hallway over there when I was doing a bit of a sorting out a little while ago. So I thought, I know what video I could do. Something useful, some, some useful information. So... Yeah, that's uh, all I wanted to say. So again, don't buy the cheap locks. And remember that it's a good idea to carry at least two different locks. And uh, remember to lock your bike up properly. And uh, I would probably be more inclined to buy decent locks if you've got a uh, very expensive bike because naturally they're the ones that will uh, be more tempting to steal especially if your bike's got some top of the range parts on it like Campagnolo parts for example I know they um, do pretty well on eBay even second hand Campagnolo parts and the chances are when your bike gets nicked that's exactly what happens to it it gets broken up for parts and the parts sold on eBay because the parts can't be traced and then the frame is probably cut for scrap or taken down to the local dump and thrown in the scrap bin never to be seen again so one thing I also do is on the bottom bracket bloody cat, get out of the way there's um, a serial number and every bike I've owned I've noted down the serial number it's all logged on that machine. So, if a bike ever does go missing again, I can at least give the police the serial number. And I know the chances are you'll never see a bike again and the cops won't recover it, but you never know. Some people are daft enough to steal a bike and then go riding round on it, or sell it to some poor un unsuspecting person who's looking for a cheap bike <coughs> so yeah I actually feel like going for a ride on this but I can't be bothered to put my boots back on now and it's getting quite late so maybe tomorrow um, Anything else I can say? Yeah. It is easy to make a bike like this disappear.
very easy. Even if it's quite a unique looking bike like my old Gary Fisher was. Because it was the only bright orange bike in town. As I say bright orange, it was more of a um, coppery colour I suppose I'd call it. Nice colour. Front suspension, just like this one. Except it had V brakes instead of disc brakes. Uh, I don't think I've got a video of it on my channel. But I know I've got photos of it on my Facebook still, so... If anyone wanted to have a look at it, I can soon... Link you a link. Link you a link. Drop you a link. Um... Yeah, I think that's about it. The only reason I make a video like this is because I don't want to see people end up making the same mistakes I made. So I thought I'd post it when I found that lock. I thought I'd post a video. Um, Giving a bit of advice. You know, a bit of knowledge never hurts. I learned from my own mistakes, and every time I now go to my local Sainsbury's, the bike is locked to a solid bar, and within um, visibility of a CCTV camera as well. Well, I think it is. Knowing my luck, it's probably still out of. Um, camera shot like it was before. Anyway, I do lock it every time now. now wherever I go in town, actually. It's stupid because I've lived in this town, what am I, 31? 30 years. I spent a year. I spent a year in a neighbouring town in a hostel many years ago, so. 30 years in the same town, I barely ever locked my bike up. Just to show how low the crime rate is in my town. And when you actually look around, not many people do bother locking their bikes up in this town. But uh, now that I've had one taken from me from a store in town, I don't take the risk anymore. It gets locked. Um, I've lost count on how many bikes I've had stolen over the years. I can think of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight in the past, I don't know, ten years I suppose. Yeah, it would be about ten years now. A bit more. So, just a little less than one bike a year. Wherever you leave your bike, keep it safe. And keep it locked. I know some of us keen cyclists uh, treasure our bikes, so it's quite uh, upsetting when they do go missing. I suppose it's upsetting for anyone when they go missing. You know, it's not nice having stuff stolen from you. The really stupid thing was, I was actually going, going to build this Claude Butler up anyway. When this was done, I was going to sell the Gary Fisher. Because I was ready for a change. But um, that sort of got pushed further. For, um, pushed. Uh, what's the word? I ended up building this a lot sooner than I had planned. Without selling the Gary Fisher as well. So, uh, never mind. I didn't think it was. My chain's not on that front sprocket properly. Eh. It's going to be a problem. I only know it's because I was just rolling this 
crank around. So, just over 15 minutes, I'll end the video here. So if you like my advice, hit the like button. If you think my advice is a load of crap, hit the dislike button. Any comments, questions and insults, please leave in the comments section below. Until next time, bye.